We will now continue on with our um, with our instruction or our lectures on on uh, third grade Singapore math. And what I really like about this this whole Singapore math way of teaching is that they start with fairly simple concepts, but they really make sure that you have a deep, deep, deep understanding of what the concepts what the concept is and all the different ways to think about it. So for example, today I'm going to start talking about addition and subtraction. You might say, well, I already know how to add and subtract, and you probably do. And maybe you'll find this easy. But um, I think you'll find that if, as we go through all of the lectures, you might discover some new insights or some new ways of looking at something that you thought was really, really, really easy. So let's say that. I wanted to know, well, well, first of all, you know about addition and subtraction, right? If I say I wanted to add 1 and 2, you would say, well, that's just 1 plus 2. That equals 3. And I'm going to introduce you to what could be a new word, or actually two new words, and that's sum and difference. So the sum is essentially when you say to find the sum of two numbers, you're essentially adding them. And when you say the difference, you're essentially saying how different are the two numbers. And I'll, I'll give you a bunch of examples. Let me. So let's say I have in the Singapore Math Book. I'm actually on page 18, and I'm just using their problems. I'm doing a, f a few adaptations. Uh, this is the the this is the this is the 3A primary mathematics book. But I'll do some adaptations, but for the most part, I'm just doing their problems and with, with a little bit of uh, my commentary. So let's say I had four. They draw flowers, but let's say I just have four circles, and I have seven circles right below it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our question is, what is the sum? What is the sum of four and seven? Well, I just said, taking the sum of two numbers is just like adding the two numbers. So taking the sum of 4 and 7 is the same thing as taking the sum of 7 and 4. And of course, if we're just going to add the two numbers, we just have to know what 4 plus 7 is. And you should hopefully know that offhand. If you don't, uh, you can count these circles up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right? The sum is essentially how much do we have when we combine the two numbers, or the sum. Now what if I were to ask you, what is the difference between, between, and that's kind of an important, an important word, between 4 and 7. So as I said, a difference tells you, uh, when someone's asking what's the difference, they want to know how different are the two numbers. So how different are 4, this is 4 up here, this is 4 up here, and this is 7. How different are 4 and 7? Well, there's a, there's 4 would be 7 if it had 3 more, right? If we, if we drew 3, if 4 was 3 larger, it would be the same thing as 7. So when someone is, is saying, what is the difference between 4 and 7, they're literally asking you, how much do you have to increase the, the smaller number to get the bigger number, or how much you could also say, well, to get from 7 to 4, I have to take 3 out of 7. Uh, so, but either way you look at it, the difference between the two is 3. And how do you calculate it? Well, you subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So you say 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. And that 3 is the difference between the two. You could view it as how much do you have to increase the smaller number to get the bigger number, or how much do you have to decrease the bigger number to get the smaller number, or just, you know, how big is the, I, I don't want to use the same word, but you know how, how different are they? Anyway, I don't want to beat a dead horse, as they say. So let me draw yeah, some, some cubes, Singapore math style. So they draw eight cubes. Let's see, I'm going to try to approximate. I'll do it in a slightly different color. They only use two colors throughout the whole book. Let me see. Well, that's not what I wanted to do, but good enough. Let's see, they want to do eight. So let me drive it, divide it in two first. Let me see, that's about the middle. And then if I divide it in two again here and here, that'll be four. And then I have to divide each of these in two to get eight. That's because I wanted them to be relatively. So that's 8. And then they have 5. And so 5 
I'll use a different color for five. Let's see, but I want it to e match up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And I will let me split it up. So you get one, two, three, four. And so they want to. They they tell us. Well, you know, eight plus five. Oh, that I'm using the eight plus five is equal to. And they say blank. Well. We're just adding the two numbers. You might not know it already, but you should visualize it. Well, what's eight plus five? It's like if you took these and you put them at this end right here. How many? How what would be the total length of the longer bar, or what is the combined length of the two bars? Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Right? And you probably find that really, really, really easy. But the reason why they're doing that is so that you realize how. The sum is different from the difference. So, for example, you know we could have rewritten this statement as the sum of eight and five is thirteen. Oh boy, my phone's ringing. I'm not going to answer it. I think I think that's someone getting me to either donate money or buy Dish networks or or whatever. So now let's do. Let we, you know, this is the sum. That's the easy part. Now, what what would you say if I asked you what is the difference? What is the difference? What is the difference between eight and thirteen? And I could have said it either way, and that's where writing it. As the difference, as opposed to subtracting, is different. If I could have said, "What is the difference between 13 and 8?" Either way, it doesn't matter. We just want to know how far. Oh no, sorry, not between 8 and 13. I want to know the difference. Actually, although that's an interesting question to answer as well. But what is the difference between 8 and 5? 8 and 5, right? What is the difference between 8 and 5? How so? How far apart are they essentially? Well, if we look here, if we have these, this blue 5. If we added three more cubes, we would get eight. Or if we took these three cubes off of the eight, we would have gotten five. So either way, you would have to change one of the numbers by three to get the other one. Right? So the difference between eight and five is the same thing as eight minus five, which is equal to three. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it. And actually, even more important than just being able to do the problem, because I think you find this type of problem to be extremely easy, or this type of problem to be extremely easy, I want you to understand uh, kind of on a deeper level what it's really saying. It's saying how far apart are these numbers. It just doesn't want you to say, oh, boy, well, I've, I've already memorized what 8 and 5 are, uh, it, what, the, what you know, 8 minus 5 is. It wants you to really, we really want you to think about, boy, it's just saying how, how, how different are the two numbers. You literally can just read the sentence literally. That's all it means. So let's say that I had two bars. I'm not going to break them up anymore. Let's say that the length of this bar is, I don't know, it's 90. Maybe it's 90 millimeters. Maybe it's 90 miles. Who knows? The length of that bar is 90. And let's say that I have another bar right here. Let me turn my phone ringer back on. My, I had it off the other day when I was recording these videos, and my wife called, and she couldn't get me, and and she questioned whether I cared about her anymore. So it's very important when loved ones call that you pick up the phone. Anyway, back to back to the math problem. Um, what was I doing? <laughs> so I had another bar right here, and let's say the length of that bar. Let's say the length of this bar. Is 54. So I will ask you the same questions that we've been asking this entire video. What is the sum of 90 and 54? And I'm also going to ask you what is what is the difference, the hardest part of these problems is probably reading my handwriting. What is the difference between 90 
and 54. Well, once again, the sum, they're saying, well, what happens when you combine these two blocks? If I put this block here, and I could do that. Let me see. If I put that block here, you would get a, it would add on over here, roughly about that long. And so when you want the sum, you want the length of the entire thing. And hopefully you know how to add two numbers. But if you don't, we can work it out. It's 54 plus 90. So let's do 90 plus 54. 0 plus 4 is 4. 5 plus 9 is 14. 144, which also is 12 times 12. But anyway, I'm going off topic. But anyway, the sum of 90 and 54 is 90 plus 54, which is 144. And then what is the difference between 90 and 54? Now, this is, I think, where it gets a little bit more conceptually easy. interesting. When you think about difference, you want to know how far apart are the two numbers. Or what would I have to add to 54 to get 90? Or what would I have to take to subtract from 90 to get to 54? Either of those uh, is the difference. And so we could just say 90 minus 54, right? The way to calculate the difference is to subtract the smaller from the larger number. We could say 90 minus 54. And we're going to do, this might be a little bit of a review from second grade, but we could, you should hope, actually, it's not a bad idea to memorize it. And I'll, 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 I'll give you a way to think about it. What's the difference between 60 and 54? The difference, 54 is 6 away from 60, right? And what's the difference between 90 and 60? Right? The difference, let me, let me say it this way. I'm running out of space. The 90 minus 60 is equal to 30, right? And 60 minus 54 is equal to 6. So 90 minus 54 is actually 36. That's how I do it in my head. And I that's a little bit off the Singapore math curriculum, but maybe. Maybe you'll find something like that interesting. But the other way to do it, and we'll, we'll go into more detail in, in, in terms of how does borrowing or regrouping work. But you could say 90 minus 54. And this is just classic borrowing. We could say, well, let me borrow a 10. Let me borrow 1 from the 10's place. And that becomes 10 in the 1's place, right? Just going back to our place value. so. We took, you know, we, we essentially cashed in a, a ten dollar chip and got ten one dollar chips, and then we take that ten minus the four is six, and then eight minus five is thirty six. So either way, the difference between ninety and fifty four is thirty six. And now this is interesting. What is the difference? What is different? What is the difference between ninety? And 36. So what would you have to add to 36 to get 90, or what would you have to subtract from 90 to get 36? Well, let me give you a hint. We know the difference between 90 and 54 is 36. So if I drew a block here of exactly length 36, it would look something like this. Right? That is of, not in my drawing, but in the idea, that is of length 36. So there's a couple of ways we can think about it. The difference between 54 and 90 is 36. That's how, that's how much one would have to grow or one would have to shrink. Or the difference between 90 and 54 is 36. The sum of 54 and 36 is 90, right? And also, the difference between 90 and 36 is 54. And why is that? Because imagine if this wasn't here and we, were, we just had that question. What is, the, what is the difference between 90 and 36? Well, we could say, well, we could increase 36 by 54 to the left to get 90, or we could decrease 90 by 54 to the right to get 36. Well, anyway, hopefully you found this vaguely insightful, and um, I did not either bore or confuse you. And I will see you in the next video. See you soon.